In this podcast episode, we want to introduce you to our BCEN friend, Jessica Evans. Michael Dexter and Mark Eggers talk with Jessica about being a pediatric nurse and what her role entails. Congratulations to Jessica Evans for being BCEN's 2022 Distinguished CPEN Award winner. This episode is called Getting to Know BCEN's 2022 Distinguished CPEN Award winner. Hello, and welcome to the BCN and Friends podcast, where we hold interesting conversations about learning with a range of thought leaders, BCN certification holders, and industry professionals. But most importantly, create value and insight for you, our professional nurses across the emergency spectrum. We hope you find our discussions interesting, informative, sometimes funny, sometimes serious, but always valuable. I'm Mark Eggers, Manager of Education Technology Services at BCN, and one of your hosts for today. I'm joined by my co-host, Michael Dexter, Director of Professional Development at BCN. Hi, Michael. Hello, Mark. Great to be with you. Thank you. In this episode of BCN and Friends, we have Jessica Evans. Michael, would you like to tell us about our BCN and friend, Jessica? Yeah, I would be happy to. I'm excited to have Jessica on the podcast with us today. Jessica Evans is a registered nurse in the Pediatric Emergency Department at New York Presbyterian Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital, the only pediatric level one trauma center in New York City. Jessica has worked in the Pediatric Emergency Department for her entire nursing career beginning in 2014 and became a certified pediatric emergency nurse in 2016. Jessica is a strong advocate for simulation-based multidisciplinary education and serves on her department's simulation committee and as the co-chair of her hospital's vascular access committee. Jessica authored a pediatric emergency nursing handbook that is in use by her hospital and has presented and been an invited speaker on medical simulation and clinical debriefing at a number of national and international conferences and has also advised business leaders on teamwork in high-pressure settings. Jessica is passionate about expanding the roles of both palliative care and child life in the emergency department setting and also works as a sexual assault forensic examiner. Prior to becoming a nurse, Jessica was an aerospace engineer at the U.S. Navy's Naval Sea Systems Command, where she received the Navy Meritus Civilian Service Award. Jessica holds a Bachelor of Science in Engineering from Washington University in St. Louis and a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from New York University. She resides in New York City with her husband, one-year-old daughter, and dog. Jessica is a recipient of the 2022 BCEN Distinguished CPEN Award. Jessica, welcome to the BCEN and Friends podcast. It is a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you. All right. Well, you have a lot to be proud of, and you have a very interesting career, uh, both in nursing and as well as the engineering background. Can you tell us just a little bit more about yourself and then what made you decide to do a career switch and pursue nursing? Sure. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for having me. Um, I was really humbled and honored by this award and it's been overwhelming just all of the support I've received and I've, it's been really fun to be invited onto the podcast. Um, so as with some of your previous guests, nursing wasn't my first career. Um, I was an engineer and I worked for the Navy. Um, and I think that one of the things with working for the government, it's important work, but a lot of times you're a very small cog in a big wheel and it just wasn't fulfilling me the way I was hoping. Um, so I was looking for something that still relied on the critical thinking side of engineering, um, but with a more interpersonal component, which is how I landed on nursing. Um, so while I was working for the Navy, I completed my prereqs. I moved to New York City um, to go to the accelerated nursing program at NYU. And then when I graduated, I was hired at New York Presbyterian into the pediatric emergency department. And I've been there ever since. All right. That's great. So was pediatric nursing your goal going into nursing school? Did you want to become a pediatric nurse or what made you decide to take that path? I really didn't. I did not particularly enjoy my pediatrics rotations in nursing school, actually. But at the time, I had a lot of interviews in peds jobs, and it I kind of sort of just fell into it. In retrospect, it's really hard to imagine working with adults now. I absolutely love my field, and I feel very grateful that I kind of landed here by accident. All right. Awesome. Well, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. And so, you know, there's a lot of nurses, myself included, that work in mixed DDs where we see adults and peds. But 
you, uh, you mentioned that you work in a level one pediatric trauma center. So can you maybe specify what the role of a pediatric emergency nurse is in your setting and what your role entails? Sure. Um, so I work at, like you said, a level one pediatric trauma center. It's a standalone pediatric hospital. It's a 250 bed hospital um, with a 40 bed emergency department. Um, I think we see about 55,000 patients a year. And our patient population is very diverse. So on the one hand, we take care of a lot of really high risk, complex, really complex care kids um, with a wide variety of um, medical backgrounds. Um, Families come to us from all over the world. We have a huge um, congenital cardiac program. We take care of a lot of really rare genetic illnesses that we specialize in. Um, And a lot of kids who are really sick at baseline. Um, The flip side to that is that we also provide care to our local community across the whole range. So that's trauma, childhood illness, injuries. Um, We see a lot of behavioral health emergencies. I know most ER nurses can attest to this, but for better or for worse, a lot of emergency departments are where a lot of underserviced communities really end up getting a lot of primary care. Um, And I think the fact that we kind of see this huge range is definitely one of the challenges of working in an environment like this, but it's also one of the more fun aspects of the job that you really kind of get to see it all. Yeah, that's, that's great information. And so with all of that, and and you mentioned like genetic, uh, specifically genetics and and some congenital cardiac, how do you keep up with some of the education needed for some of these uh, very rare conditions that come into your ED? And and how do you, um, you know, grow as as a pediatric emergency nurse when you have such a a diverse and complex uh, variety of patients? That's a great question. I think what feels unique to us, but I think is similar across other big children's hospitals is that something that's rare across the board isn't always actually rare to us. For instance, we take care of a lot of patients who have SMA, spinal muscular atrophy, which is a very rare disease. We have a lot of specialists. So for us, this is a disease that we get very used to caring for. Um, And I think that's kind of what's unique about working in a pediatric hospital. Um, That being said, there's always going to be things that come through the front door where it's one of a handful of children in the world who have a particular illness. Um, And I always teach the people I'm training, it's okay to say, I'm not familiar with that. Like, what are some of the components of your child's illness or look it up or, um, you know, do some deep diving into the chart or even just the literature um, to kind of stay up to date. You're never going to know everything about everyone. And it's really okay to acknowledge that. I think that acknowledging that is safe and important. Yeah, that's great. And so you became a a certified pediatric emergency nurse. You you obtained your CPEN in 2016. And so, you know, just looking at what you've talked to us about your career and and then the diverse amount of education that you need for caring for this patient population, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about why you chose the path to become a certified pediatric nurse and then what certification means to you? Emergency care is a really kind of niche component of pediatrics. And at the same time, pediatrics is a really specialized subset of emergency medicine. And what CPEN certification really acknowledges is that this is its own field and that it requires its own knowledge base, its own set of skills. And it, the certification recognizes pediatric emergency nursing as really unique from either of the kind of umbrella fields. Um, And I think that that's a really important thing about certification for us as individual nurses and just for the field in general. Um, When I was a new grad, I was a new grad in my um, pediatric emergency department, and there's just so much to learn. And I felt like studying for the CPEN as I got more comfortable in my role was a way to kind of provide a framework for continuing my education. So as I became more comfortable and competent with my day-to-day tasks, continuing to study for certification um, felt just kind of like an obvious progression of that learning. Um, And then further along in my career now, maintaining certification, I think it's just a really important part of recognizing the value bedside nurses bring. There's this huge push, which is wonderful for nurses to pursue graduate education and leadership roles in hospitals, but we still need really great bedside nurses. And I think certification is one of the ways that really emphasizes that value and allows us to kind of prove our value in that role. And it should go without saying that better trained nurses produce better patient outcomes. 
Yeah, that's true. And that's a, some really excellent points you've made there. I think so, so many times we put emphasis on in, in nursing school on going directly into a graduate program or, or becoming a, a nurse practitioner or CRNA and all of those have their place definitely. But, you know, I think putting emphasis on being a good bedside clinician is extremely critical, especially, you know, the further we progress with medicine and, and care practices and things, it's important to have really good clinicians at the bedside. So, you know, as you have talked about not only certification, but the importance of recertification, how do you inspire others to become certified and, and achieve board certification throughout your hospital and your community of nurses that you stay in contact with? Um, one of my favorite things about my job is precepting. I really like training new nurses, nurses who are new to the emergency room in particular. Um, and I think that CPAN and studying for certification provides a really good framework for just training people who are new to our environment. You know, you could have in one room, you have this a newborn baby with a congenital cardiac defect. And then next door, you have a teenage trauma patient. And next door to that kid is somebody with a behavioral health crisis. And I think that being able to kind of seamlessly move between such a wide range of cases is a very specific skill. And it requires a really specific type of knowledge. Um, and I always tell the people I'm training that when you work in this environment day to day in and out, that's really the best possible preparation for taking your certification. There's didactic and there's studying, but when you're doing the work already 12 hours a day, multiple days a week, come in really well prepared for certification. Um, and I think that in that regard, the certification is really just a recognition of the work we're already doing. Um, I think a lot of people view it as this additional thing, but we're doing the work, we're doing the learning and certification recognizes that. And like we were talking about with bedside nursing, I feel really strongly, I, I'm so appreciative of my team and the bedside nurses I work with. I love bedside nursing. And like you said, there's such a role for advanced care nurses and nurses in leadership positions. But I think there's something unique that comes with working 12 hours next to someone, kind of going through a shift together, and then being able to very genuinely at the end of that say, wow, you're a really amazing nurse. Why are you not certified yet? What can we do to help you get your certification? And I think that kind of peer-to-peer -peer encouragement is really important and valuable. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And thank you for sharing all of that. And I, I wish, you know, everybody's going to hear this on the podcast and, and hear the passion in your voice. I wish they could see the passion that you have, even in your mannerisms and things as we're talking. And I just so appreciate all of all of those comments. Thank you uh, for doing that. And I, I could talk to you for a long time about this. I do want to turn it over to Mark. I, I wanted to ask you one more quick question, though, before I do. Um, and that is about simulation. And we had mentioned in uh, in the show notes at the beginning that you work with simulation, you've taught on simulation. Can you tell me a little bit more about the role of simulation in emergency nursing orientation or even in continuing education um, throughout the year for, for very seasoned nurses? How do you use simulation and, and what are some of your roles? Sure. Um, so simulation in healthcare education has obviously made huge advances over the years and the decades. Um, if you look at adult learning theory, there's a huge amount of evidence for simulation-based education. So, you know, there's a lot of evidence out there that shows that as adults, we learn better by doing. We learn better when we're really invested in what we're learning. Um, and simulation provides the perfect background to do that. Um, so in my department, we do weekly interdisciplinary insight to simulation. So once a week we have a mock code, it's with our entire team in our actual clinical environment. It's really remarkable because it's one thing to have book knowledge, but it's quite another thing to actually put that to the test. Um, so for instance, let's say a baby comes in in SVT and you know from all of your didactic learning that you try bagel maneuvers and then you give adenosine. We in simulation get to put that baby, it's usually a mannequin, in our trauma bay with our team um, so it's not just about the medication, it's about how we give the medication within our space, um, how our team communicates, how we choreograph a resuscitation, how we interact with the parent of a child. We even find a lot of like, systems issues that are safely uncovered in a simulation environment. Um, and that's a type of learning that you just can't get from reading or sitting through a class. Um, so that's how we implement SIM in our environment. We've used our simulation program to take some of our more challenging cases and then kind of practice them on repeat. So over the years, I've implemented a few simulations regarding palliative care and patients who present to the ER for end of life care. And we now incorporate that into our curriculum. It's a 
a really kind of high stakes but low frequency event. And so being able to practice that safely really does wonders for then when the kid actually comes in in real life and you want to be able to provide them the best care. Because as much as we get really good at caring for the kids who come in every single day and it's things we see on repeat, you want to be able to provide that same exact level of care for that kind of once in a career patient that presents. And simulation gives you that hands-on opportunity to do that. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that uh, information with us. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mark again. I think I could ask you a lot more questions. It's very interesting. And and again, thank you for just the passion even that you that you show and talking about all of these things. I think it's really great. And congratulations again on becoming the 2022 Distinguished CPEN Award winner. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Michael. And Jessica, I'd like to say congratulations too. Well-deserved. Thank you. So Jessica, can you tell us about a person or a moment in your career that greatly impacted you? Sure. It's kind of piggybacking off that last question. Um, one of the it's turning points in my career um, has to do with palliative care. So uh, somewhat early on in my career, a child came into our emergency department. They'd been on home hospice and they were having difficulty maintaining the child's comfort. And they came into our emergency room for end of life care, which is atypical of what we see in an ER. Um, and anytime a child is dying, it's not going to be a good day, obviously. But because of a variety of factors, we had really great communication. We had child life involved. We had our palliative care team involved. And we were able to take what could have been a really kind of traumatic occurrence. An ER is chaotic, and it's just not where any family hopes to provide comfort for their child who's dying. But I think that we were kind of able to take some of our medical tools and some of our communication tools and a lot of resources. And we were able to kind of take what would have been a worst case scenario and really provide an appropriate environment for this child and their family. And from that experience, it was really kind of eye-opening to me. This is just so different from what we usually do. And it was a good reminder that we can get creative in how we approach our more infrequent types of patients. We implemented a palliative care simulation so that we could use the like psychologically safe environment of education and simulation to kind of practice how we take care of these patients. Um, and that was kind of what sparked my involvement in our simulation program. So for me, that was kind of a big turning point as far as getting me involved in, I call it extracurricular, but these kind of extra um, kind of education in our unit. Um, and since then, we've really focused on interdisciplinary programming and being able to really emphasize how our team works together. It's not just nurses, it's not just doctors, but that full group is really the only way to get anything done really well. Um, and so I feel like this one patient was able to kind of inspire me to take a little more action in improving how we can care for all of our patients. And it was just a jumping off point for me personally in my career and in my desire to, I guess, do more and learn more and um, encourage my team to do the same. Great. Hey, thank you for sharing that with us. Appreciate it very much. Now we're going to turn a little bit to what we call our rapid fire question uh, section. And one of the first things, it's not on here, but as you were talking, we always like to ask people this, what type of dog and what's your dog's name? <laughs> I have a mini Bernadoodle and her name is Maddie. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. What would you be doing if you weren't in your current role? Is there any other things you thought of doing in life if you weren't in nursing? If I wasn't in nursing, realistically, I'd probably still be an engineer, kind of lofty dream job, maybe astronaut, probably have to get into better shape to do, be an astronaut, but I, I think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Good. Super. So I have three categories of regarding favorites I'm going to ask you about. What is your favorite book? Okay, so my favorite book is called Failure is Not an Option. It's by Gene Kranz, who is one of the most, le not the most legendary NASA um, mission controllers. Like I said, I'm a space nerd at heart. This book is wonderful in a lot of ways, but he had this phrase that he used and it was tough and confident. That's how he described his team. And I feel like that just perfectly encapsulates emergency nursing. Like, is there a better way to describe an ER nurse than tough and confident? Good. And how about favorite movie? Apollo 13. Sticking right. to the theme. Sticking to the theme. And uh, favorite song? My favorite song is by Tina Turner. It's um, River Deep Mountain High. I'm a big Motown fan. Excellent. Very good. Cool. 
And a, a comfort food or a meal that you enjoy? Pizza. I like pizza. I live in New York City. We have very easy access to good pizza. Um, and it's actually always what I want after a really challenging day at work um, to the point that my husband knows if I'm having a rough day, that's going to be the meal I request. And we call it code pizza. <laughs> good deal. Excellent. And uh, do you have any hobbies or interest? I really love to bake. That's kind of my relaxation hobby, I like decorating cookies and cakes and The nice thing is when you work in a hospital, there's always people who are very happy to have your extra baked goods. Agree. Agree. And if the audience would like to follow you online, uh, you're on LinkedIn? I am. I'm on LinkedIn under my name, and I'm also on Instagram as Jess Evans. Good. Super. Thank you. Well, Jessica, I want to take this time to thank you for joining us for this episode of BCN and Friends. Thank you for sharing your time, your stories, and, and just being with us. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for having me. And to all our listeners, we hope you'll stay tuned as we continue on with BCN and Friends and bring in new and meaningful content and perspectives. If you have a suggestion for an episode, please email us at bcn at bcn.org. I'm Mark Eggers here with Michael Dexter. On behalf of the entire BCN team, we thank and celebrate you for all that you are doing as professional nurses across the emergency spectrum. Until next time, 